Hi, my name is Troy Case. I'm the director of the Career and Internship Center. I've been asked to uh, to give you guys an introduction to uh, the, the uh, Focus 2 product. Um, we've delivered this or, or worked with a number of first-year seminars uh, with, first, with the uh, Focus um, 2 system. Uh, what we're doing with this system is we're, we're trying to get students kind of introduced to the idea of, you know, of course, thinking about career and um, and doing some planning around that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what Focus 2 is and and, and I am going to uh, focus on um, talking about what we've done with uh, the first year seminars with this. So uh, first of all, Focus 2 career is something that we purchased, uh, gosh, I think it's been, um, it's maybe been a year and a half, two years ago. Um, and and it's available for any student to go to and, and create an account and for you to create an account at this focus to careercom um, And if you want to do this, let me know. Um, and what I'd like to do is add, add you, add, add the instructors, um, professors for the, uh, for the first year seminars, add you into the system. So when students go and take an assessment, they're actually selecting you. Uh, it could make it a little bit easier if you ever wanted to have uh, reports on, on which one of your students were in there. Uh, it, it might be a little bit imperfect because, of course, the students do have to select you, um, not somebody else. So here is the system. Once you log in, once you have an account, once you uh, log in, and it is easy enough that I've been able to, uh, you know, sit down in, or, or in a class, do the presentation, have students uh create their account in the class, take an assessment in the class, and then we're able to discuss this. Um, but I'm going to show you the whole system, and then, and then, like I said, I'm going to talk about what I've tended to focus on in this. So um, this is what it looks like. You've got this career planning involvement. This, um, as you can see here, this helps students kind of understand, helps you understand, too, um, where, where students are at, you know, just kind of on the information um, that they might need to make a good career choice. This is not necessarily where we focused on uh, when, we've, when we've done this um, in the class. I'm just demonstrating what some of these things are. Academic strengths, that's pretty straightforward, you know. It's self-assessment about what they feel like they are uh, uh, doing well at in school. Then there's the career ready. Uh, what this is, is this is actually based on some uh, uh, National Association of Colleges and Employers uh, career competencies. So this is actually fairly re well, um, I'm not going to say researched, but uh, employers and colleges across the country have said these are the skills that students uh, need. And this is a self-assessment to see where students are at on those things. So in the um, first year seminars, what we've focused on is doing the interest assessment. Now, I'm going to say, uh, you know, interest is only one component. And, and honestly, you know, say you and I were sitting here and, and we're talking about, um, you know, career counseling stuff. I'm not going to spend um, all of the time on work interests, right? That It's a nice place to start a conversation, to just start thinking about what interests uh, somebody and how different occupations match up to those, um, but it's it's just, you know, it's a part of a, a much larger piece. Um, you know, and as I, as I do workshops with the students, I, you know, I, I let them know, you know, you've got to take these results with a grain of salt. I just want you in the mindset of thinking about what interests you and what occupations might match. Um, in fact, I, when, when we go through some of the results, I show them my results and how my work interests um, don't seem to match what I'm doing. But if you go into my values assessment, which is not something I often do in the classes, uh, things actually do match up nicely. So, you know, it's just a, a, a nice way of saying, you know, uh, these, these aren't perfect and sometimes they're not going to match. But why don't they match up? And um, what are some of the other things that you're considering when you uh, are making some decisions, some life decisions uh, about where you're going? So, so. Uh, when I do these as a workshop, it's generally about a 45-minute workshop. Um, I come in and, and I do some um, some very interactive uh, um, uh, presentations, um, you know, with, with the students and and have them kind of, you know, think about these different um, these different areas of interest, which are uh, realistic, investigative, artistic, social. Uh, 
enterprising and conventional. And, you know, we do some exercise around that and, and I'm able to um, uh, really all the time get them to be um, pretty interactive with that. Um, and I think I could deliver this pretty well on, um, uh, on, on video too, um, if that's how you're uh, teaching in any of these classes. So um, let me know if you wanted to do that. I'm happy to do that. Um, let me show you my results really quick on, on work interests. So it gives you kind of, you know, I, I talked about these different categories, the realistic, enterprising, social, investigative, um, so on and so forth. Um, it explains that a little bit, but then this is where the students automatically go to, you know, showing these um, occupations a matchup. You can see that that doesn't match up um, uh, very nicely with what I do for a career. And I explain why that doesn't match up and how these are interests that I, I, um, I definitely um, fulfill in different areas of my life, not necessarily um, in, in, my, um, in my career. But if you went to the values, the results of my values assessment, you can see uh, that they're much more closely related to what I do. Um, and you know, that's worth discussion too. So what else we can do here is, I mean, you can see that the, we can look at our interests and see how those match up with different occupations. Uh, we can explore education, or, or sorry, we can explore different careers too here. So, um, so I can explore different occupations. You know, we can type in uh, whatever occupation. We'll just go ahead and click in. I'll shoot. Um, should have been better prepared for this one. Let's say animal scientist, just because it's right there. Um, have, I honestly don't know what that might be. So animal scientist gives us general description, um, gives us how, um, how my interests match up with animal scientists, uh, some of the skills that I might need for that. Uh, of course, we're talking about values here too, some um, work conditions. Sorry, I'm probably making some folks dizzy here. Uh, education requirement, this is important. Um, and then of course, we will have students jumping down here to earnings and seeing how much they might make in this field. Um, so what this is doing, I believe this is tapping into uh, the Occupational Outlook Handbook, some uh, federal information. So it's, it's really, you know, pretty standard information that you'd find on the web, um, some governmental websites, um, ONET, um, Occupational Outlook Handbook, um, Career One Stop, different places like that that are, are government ran and, uh, and, and their careers are well researched. Um, down here at the bottom too, you know, if you wanted to explore this a little bit, I could see this being helpful with advising. Um, you could look at, um, you know, kind of the roadmap of, of um, what students have done in education and what they're planning to do in education. Same thing goes for professional development. What have they done for experiential learning? Um, and what are they planning to do for experiential learning? This can help students kind of understand where, they, where they've been at and where they're going, some of the things that they need to do to get to uh, to get to their goals, really, and um, and plan those out. I think it'd be really helpful for um, advisors to do that, um, and, and it's kind of a way to get students um, actually doing something and then um, promoting discussion with um, academic advisors. So I think that that is pretty much it with the um, the focus system, but. Uh, I can't emphasize enough, if you want me to come in uh, to your class, you want me to do this on the web, happy to do this. You know, it's a great way for my office, for me to connect with students. And once I build that connection with students, of course, we see students in our office. And, and I like to believe that that helps us all out once students start to do that. So um, go ahead and contact me. Uh, let me know if there's anything that I can do. Again, we focus on the interest assessment, but I can go lots of different directions with this system. Thank you very much, and I hope to uh, see you and work with you this semester.